What's up nerds? In my last video, I took the engine out of this old tractor that kept trying to hotbox the shed with the fumes of combusted dinosaur squeezings and replaced it with an electric motor, making it a much more efficient and less noxious machine powered by the sun. For any city slickers watching, a tractor is kind of like a car, but the owner min-maxed it and upgraded only the rear tires while neglecting everything else, including the seat. Well, it did have a seat at one point, but it was so rusty and uncomfortable that I genuinely preferred to sit directly on the transmission casing to avoid getting getting butt tetanus. But I know everyone isn't as rugged as I am, so purely for the benefit of others, I will go ahead and replace the seat. I just bought a universal seat from Princess Auto, which is like the Canadian version of Harbor Freight. It's supposed to have a bolt pattern for every conceivable tractor in the universe, but somehow it doesn't have the right bolt pattern for this one. So I'll have to make a spacer out of some rusty steel tubing. Should we set it to adult or kid mode? Kid mode. You are a child. Okay. Gotta break it in. I was surprised to hear that a lot of people think I should put the original tin panels back on. Why would I want to conceal all the sick new parts? I feel like doing that would be in the same vein as putting a fake grill on an electric car, although I guess some people are into that. Instead, I got some black vinyl sticker sheets, and I'm using my laser cutter, which I nicknamed Occam's Laser, to cut out some decals to put on the battery. Side note. Is it pronounced decal or decal? I've heard both, and to be honest, both sound kind of weird. I cut out some letters and numbers. In the last video, I showed how the control panel by the steering wheel has a button for headlights, but there weren't actually any headlights. It's finally time to fix that situation. I believe this is how the ink for silver sharpies is made. It's also how the most annoying sound in the universe is made. This is just one of the cheapest pairs of LED headlights I could find on Amazon. The kind of thing you might find on a Jeep with angry eyes. I wired them into my DC-DC converter, and I found that they draw about 1 amp, so I added a 2 amp fuse to the fuse box. I also got a new charger, and this one is configurable, so I can make it charge up to only 85% to prolong the battery life. Now if this were a lithium iron phosphate battery, it wouldn't matter so much, but it isn't. There were a bunch of people saying that the electric tractor is not actually better for the environment because the electricity still comes from coal. So let's investigate this claim. This is where we charge the tractor, and these panels don't look like they're made out of coal. Maybe the coal is in this cabinet. Hmm, I don't see any. Let's check the other side. These big bricks don't look like coal either. But oh wait, there's a cap on top. Hmm, I can't see inside, but that must be where the coal is located. After about 5 minutes of driving the tractor, it's obvious that just having a knob to control the speed is pretty inconvenient. Anyone who's driven a tractor a lot is used to having a clutch pedal. Anytime you need to do some really low speed maneuvering, such as hooking up a trailer or an implement, you have to rely on slipping the clutch for those very precise maneuvers. Also, if you have to make an emergency stop, your instinct is to slam your foot down on the clutch pedal and the tractor will come to a complete stop pretty much instantly because the rolling resistance is so high. You rarely ever have to touch the brakes, unless you're trying to do differential steering, but I'll get into that later. But obviously there's no mechanical clutch, because I got rid of it. So I'm going to try and make an electronic simulated clutch pedal. All it will really do is control the speed of the motor, but it'll at least simulate the behavior of an actual clutch pedal. So I found this cheap electronic throttle pedal. It's advertised as being a replacement for a car, but I don't know if I'd trust something this cheap in an actual car, but for farm equipment, anything goes. So it outputs a voltage from 0.8 to 4.2 volts, depending on how much it's pressed. If I were to just wire this into the motor controller directly, not only would it just behave like an accelerator pedal instead of a clutch, it also wouldn't come to a complete stop or allow you to go to full throttle. Also, I don't want to fully get rid of the throttle knob because normal tractors have a throttle lever by the steering wheel and I want to try and mimic that behavior. So I need some sort of device that will read the signal from the knob and read the signal from the pedal 
and combine those signals to send a new signal to the motor. Unfortunately, such a bizarre device doesn't seem to exist, so I'm going to have to design my own PCB. PCBs, or polychlorinated biphenyls, are chemical compounds with the formula C12, wait, sorry, wrong type of PCB. I designed this printed circuit board, which has an AT Tiny 85 microcontroller to read the signals from the clutch pedal and the throttle knob and generate a new signal to send to the motor controller. I had configured the motor controller to directly read the throttle knob, which is a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer, so I had to reconfigure it to accept a 0 to 5 volt signal instead. The microcontroller on my throttle control board can't generate a variable analog voltage though, so I'm using a chip called a digital to analog converter, or DAC. The microcontroller talks to the DAC using a digital communication protocol called I2C, and the DAC produces a voltage between 0 to 5 volts. The microcontroller can read analog voltages though, as it has a built-in analog to digital converter, or ADC. The clutch pedal produces a voltage between 0.8 and 4.2 volts, and the throttle knob is just a variable resistor, so by connecting one side to ground, and the other side through a pull-up resistor to 5 volts, the midpoint will produce a changing voltage that the microcontroller can read. Then I took my schematic and laid it all out as a PCB design, I ordered the boards and the parts, and then I soldered them all on. After soldering the board, it's important to clean off the flux residue. The best way to do this is with some rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush. Obviously, don't use your own toothbrush for this use your siblings. Next, I used an Arduino Uno to program the microcontroller through the Arduino IDE. You can wire the AD Tiny to the Arduino with jumpers, but I made a custom shield because it makes it a lot easier. The program starts when the board is powered on. We initialize the I2C device and immediately send a zero volt signal to the motor controller so that the motor doesn't spin. Then we check if the clutch pedal is pressed. If not, we'll just blink the LED until the clutch pedal is pressed. Then we'll turn the status LED on. Then we'll begin the cycle of reading the clutch pedal position and mapping it to a value of 0 to 1. Then we read the throttle knob position and do the same thing. Then we check if any of these are outside the expected range. If they are, we disable the motor controller, turn the status LED off, and then do nothing. And we remain in this state until the board is power cycled. But if none of the values are outside the expected range, then we set the motor controller to the clutch position, multiplied by the throttle position, multiplied by 5. Then we go back and repeat the cycle until the end of time. Here's what it looks like in practice. I turn the tractor on, the LED blinks rapidly until I press the clutch pedal, then I can use the knob and the clutch pedal to vary the speed of the motor. Let's take it for a test drive, but first I'll put the cover on. Normally I would just 3D print threads and screw directly into the plastic, but just for you guys, this time I'm sparing no expense and using brass standoffs. Okay, I realize I haven't really shown it doing actual farming work. I assure you it can, but I'm still working on that video. In the meantime, here's a quick preview. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. And if you want to support the channel beyond just clicking a severed thumb, I've got a Patreon page where I give channel updates, early access to the videos, and I sometimes even send cool stuff like stickers to my top tier patrons. Well, that's the end of the video.